Hi folks, Paul here and welcome to episode 2 of my permanent camp shelter build. In this episode we're going to take a look at actually putting some covering on the shelter. So the last episode was me building the frame, if you haven't seen that episode then I suggest you go back and check it out and that'll give you some idea of my intentions and how this was all put together. For those of you that did watch episode 1 you'll know that there's been some changes since the end of that episode and I'll just talk you through those just now. Okay, so for those of you that seen the first episode, you'll have seen the basic frame get put together. But you'll be able to tell that there's been more work done. Um, as I mentioned in that video, I only really put up the very rough frame. In the meantime, I've managed to put together this sort of uh, lean-to doorway, which I'm going to build a, an actual door on. That's just going to act as a porch for me to keep sort of dirty equipment and stuff in. And then going through into the actual shelter itself you'll see I've cleared all the floor here reason for that is I'm gonna have a fire in here I want to be able to see the ground as clearly as possible in case um, the fire happens to spread into the ground which it shouldn't do the plan is to build a nice permanent fireplace in here um, so that shouldn't happen but it just helps me see what's going on with the surrounding area um, and also on top of that this area is very very prone to ticks and of course the ticks will lie in the moss and wait for an animal to come along so getting rid of the moss will hopefully help reduce the number of ticks that we encounter in here as well. As for the structure itself you can see I've got the main poles going up and then I've got these cross members coming across and that goes all the way around the, uh, the shelter. These are the main structural poles, the ones you see going straight vertically. The ones that are coming across are just to fill in this gap and that will become important later on when I come to lay material on here. If this gap was too big then I would need large branches to fill in that huge area but because I've split it in half using this stick I can then use smaller pieces of foliage to kind of fill in that gap. So that's just to, to help with that. You'll also see I've been busy kind of making bits and pieces. I've just got a little seat in here for when I'm taking a rest and I want to just sit and make something. Um, I've been making these little peg baskets recently, I'll be doing a video on them soon so if you're interested in that sort of thing then keep an eye out on the channel for, for that. Um, also found this swan bone here which I'm going to turn into flute, that might be a video in itself. But that's pretty much the inside, there's nothing too exciting to, uh, to talk about. On the outside, there's not really much to mention. I've been working on a little bit of an idea um, in terms of a window, so you can see that there. I played around with a couple of different ideas for a window, but this seems like the the most fitting. It's very triangular, and of course the whole structure is sort of one big series of triangles, so it seems very fitting. But it also means I can have a little window ledge in there, I can, you know, put nice stuff on it and, and decorate it and that sort of thing. So that's the shelter, there's not been a huge amount of, uh, of changes, you can see I have dabbled with filling this in just to, to get an idea of what that's going to look like but all in all collecting all these poles and things probably took another four to six hours and um, these are all quite tall and so they're quite hard to come by but that's basically the uh, the rundown i'll sit you guys down and then we'll have a quick conversation about what i'm going to do next Okay, so that's a little update on how the shelter is looking right now. Now in today's episode, my plan is to tr start covering the shelter. Now this is going to be no mean feat by any means. It's probably going to take me, I don't know, three or four days to cover the whole thing, um, working sort of five or six hours each day. And thankfully the, the wind and storms that we've had recently have made this a little bit easier on me. So the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to use these um, branches that have come down here, these are all um, spruce branches or spruce boughs. I'm going to use those as a first initial layer on the shelter. They're going to kind of fill in all those large gaps I was talking about, like where I've got those cross members coming up. They're going to fill in all those big gaps. And then on top of that, what I'm going to do is start placing moss on top of those branches. Now the moss will be the real sort of finishing layer, and that will be what offers all the weather resistant protection. Um, so I basically have to cover this entire thing twice just to uh, to make sure that it's done properly but that's what's going to happen in today's video. It's going to be fairly quick, there's not much to discuss really so I hope you enjoy and I'll catch up with you guys at the end. Ha <laughs> ha 
Okay, so I've gotten to the point where I need to do the window. And um, you can see I've kind of left that space open there. I've never done one of these before. I don't really know what order is best to do it in. So I'm going to try and go and cut the pieces just now. Put the window frame in place and then start sort of covering around it. I think that's going to be the best way of doing it. Um, I've never made a window of the style before, so we'll see what happens. So there we have it. I've just put the uh, window in. Exactly the same as it was before, a little bit bigger, and um, I was using bull rush stocks or cattail stocks to sort of frame out the picture I had in my mind. Um, they obviously aren't very strong, so I've swapped them out for some pieces of willow, all lashed together using string. Uh, I don't have the time, unfortunately, to dig up pine roots. Um, but what I tend to do if I've got white string is I cover it in dirt and that kind of hides it and makes it less uh, in your face. So that's the window done. I'm going to carry on patching up around it and then hopefully we'll be able to move on to some moss. Okay, so you can see I've covered the whole exterior of the shelter now in spruce boughs. Um, I've actually only done one side. It's probably taken about two, three hours just to cover one side. Um, I did stop to make the window in that time. You can see that kind of standing out now. Um, but at this point, the sort of external frame is covered. It's very patchy still, but I now I'm ready to start putting moss on. And like I said in the beginning, moss is gonna be what's really going to cover the shelter, we're going to make it weatherproof, we're going to stop the wind coming through, it'll be what really fills in all those gaps. Um, this external stuff is really just for holding the moss in place. Um, you'll notice the door here doesn't have any green stuff on it, or spruce boughs. That's because what I'm planning on doing is just sort of bunching up moss and filling up the, uh, the gaps in between the, uh, the logs there. Um, the idea being that I would like to have the logs sort of visible just to, to add to the aesthetic appeal um, and obviously I'm not going to be sleeping in the porch so it doesn't need to be as as weatherproof so my next step start collecting moss okay so this is basically what I'm looking for and uh, this is just sphagnum moss and this entire area is floored with it um, this might look quite destructive and it, it does look quite garish for a couple of weeks until the uh, area recovers but by doing this you're not causing um, a significant amount of harm like I say, this isn't a, a specialised area. This moss blankets my entire surrounding here. So all I need to do is just start bringing up chunks of it like this. And you can see that's basically one, one tile. So I'm gonna need a lot of this stuff to cover the shelter. This is the first piece.
Well folks, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, as you can see, I've got a, a good amount covered today. It's been probably about four or five hours I've been out here and um, I'm fairly pleased with the amount of progress we've made. I'll give you a quick look around the shelter so you can get a close-up view on, on what it is we've done and um, from there I'll tell you about what I have planned next. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick walk around and show you what it is I've done today and what you guys have seen me do. As you can see I've kind of covered one side of the door, the other is still untouched. I've got it up to about here, um, just past the window, and it's sort of beyond my reach at that point, so I need to figure out a way of getting up there. I'll likely make a little stool or something that I can use to get that high up. Um, but you can see I've got a nice thick covering of moss here. I redid the window, I went and got um, some stronger sticks to do the window with. Uh, as I said, I tied it with just normal string because I didn't really have the time to be digging up spruce roots, unfortunately. I'm um, not quite sure how I'm going to do the sides of the window. I would like to have sort of wood um, coming down each side of it, just to kind of make it stand out from the, the rest of the moss. And then going around the shelter you can see I've got a good layer of the spruce boughs. And then on the far side you'll notice that there is still nothing on the side, it's still completely bare. Um, and like I say, I mean this is four hours work, say, um, and I've only really kind of got one side of it done, so it gives you an idea of the scale of these things, the projects, um, and just how long they take, but it's coming along, you can see the trees behind me here that I've been collecting the spruce boughs from. They are um, slowly becoming depleted, but there's a whole host of trees down along this, uh, this little patch here, so I don't think I'll run out there. On the inside, there isn't a whole lot to, uh, to show. It's finally starting to get a bit darker in here, which is a good sign. Um, you can see all the uh, needles are still sticking through. And I'll have to go through and do this, which is sort of like a, a little stick to brace the needles back. So where I have them hanging out like this, this is quite a problem because um, on a rainy day, this is going to be the area that they're going to want to drip from. So to fix that problem, what I often do is get little sticks like this one here and use them to just kind of push back in between two um, stronger supporting poles. Um, because the needles are pushing forward and I'm pushing them back, it then creates tension or force push, pushing this way which stops these sticks from falling out of place so I'll have to go around the shelter and do that you can see I've done it in a couple of spots but only really just to try and figure out what the uh, the plan is on that front um, you can see the moss area here where it's been covered with moss um, very dense there's not a whole lot of uh, patches of light coming through which is a good sign there are a couple but um, for a very first layer that's not too bad at all. The window, um, I'll need to kind of clean up this square here and make it look nice and even but you can see it's, uh, it's quite good. I'm thinking I'll build like a little table here to uh, put things on and um, I like to make a shutter for this window at some point as well but all of this is kind of well in the future. But it's not a bad view from the uh, from the window. You quite often get deer, um, red squirrel, badgers, that sort of thing running around here so it'll be nice to have a little window to be able to see them. But that's about it really on the inside, there's not a whole lot more to, uh, to report. So I'll take you guys outside, set you back up on the tripod and tell you a bit what it is I plan on doing next and what the next episode will entail. But Overall, it's coming along. Okay, so there you have it. A quick kind of overview of the camp and what's been achieved so far. I mean, as you can see, there's still lots to do and for me to make a video on this, it would just take forever to actually get it completed in one video. So I hope you guys are okay with me kind of showing you my process and then completing it off camera. I think that's the, 
best way of doing this. I uh, don't want to make like an extended edition where it's about five days long and you're just watching me pick up moss and put it somewhere else. So I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, if you want longer videos of me just putting it together then please let me know. But in the next video I'm hoping to start moving on to the more exciting things. So the windowsill we just talked about for instance, um, putting a door in, making the sides of the window. The stuff that will make, really make it sort of feel like home. Um, the shelter will be pretty much covered when we next meet and um, those will be the sorts of things that I'll need to, to be working on. So I hope you'll join me for that episode. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this one. Remember to like and subscribe so that you get notified when the next episode goes up and uh, I'll see you all again soon.